it's Chris from the Pink Pill. Welcome back and welcome to another video. There's a saying in the black community that black mothers love their sons and raise their daughters. What that means is that they coddle their sons and they impose all sorts of work and expectations on the girls. We all know that's unfair. We've all seen it. Some of us have experienced it ourselves. So when I saw the article that I'm about to share with you on the Atlanta Black Star, I knew I wanted to bring it to your guys' attention. I'm a parent of two, but my son is my favorite. Should I admit to my daughter that her suspicions have been right all these years? The article opens like this. I have two wonderful children. My daughter is 28 and my son is 31. When we were younger, when they were younger, my son was such a mama's boy that I was genuinely concerned about him ever finding a woman he'd love more than me. My daughter, on the other hand, was always independent and didn't pay much, didn't pay me much mind. But the three of us were a solid team, depending on one another to make it through. I noticed that I have a tendency to spoil and favor my son. Bottom line, he's my favorite. My daughter accuses me of playing favorites all the time, but I adamantly deny that fact that she has tried so desperately to prove. So this is very interesting. I want to stop the show for a second. She knows, she knows that the son is the favorite, but she chooses to gaslight the daughter and not tell her the truth. Meanwhile, she sees it in every which way and refuses to acknowledge and affirm this daughter's beliefs and has her constantly doubting herself, doubting her own reality and questioning her position in the family. My son and daughter both have their own apartments. However, I tend to cook and clean for my son. Okay. Whereas I figure my daughter can fend for herself and handle her own tasks. So let's talk about this for a second. What is this in our community where we're so hard on the girls and soft on the boys and then wonder why we have such gender issues in terms of responsibilities, the fact that women feel like they have to do everything, the fact that we feel like we have to go to school and work and carry everything. Nobody sees the connection with treating sons and daughters differently. The fact that the writer could acknowledge that she goes to the son's house, cleans the apartment, cooks for him, and leaves the daughter to fend for herself and has no connection that perhaps the reason why the daughter fends for herself because she knows that the mother is not going to do that for her because the mother has always given that soft energy to the son. Why we don't make that connection is very interesting to me. My son thoroughly enjoys the treatment I give him and returns the favor. Recently, I took sick and he made it to the point to come to my home and cook me a chicken noodle soup from scratch. My daughter called to check in on me, but never actually showed up to see if I needed anything. When I balked about it, wait, let me just go back. She didn't show up and ask if she needed anything because you don't treat her with kindness. You don't treat her with softness. What makes you think that you are entitled to the softness of that type of treatment and care when you don't extend it to her? If you want that kind of treatment, you have to give it first. You're not entitled to get it just because you're the mom. If you treat your children differently, if you make it very clear that one is more important than the other, then you're not going to get that kind of treatment that you yourself don't give. She constantly makes comments about my son being my favorite and sometimes I want to yell it from the rafters that he is. <laughs> this is crazy. Last week I completed my will and in it I decided to leave my son the house. My daughter never really liked her childhood home anyhow. Well, maybe she didn't like her childhood home because you didn't make it feel like home to her. Maybe it didn't feel like a safe place. Maybe she didn't feel like she was cherished and loved. And maybe she's got some, some psychic trauma tied to the house that has to do with you and not the actual house. My daughter never really liked her childhood home, so I figured she'd be not too disappointed that I decided to leave the house 
to my son. Now she's not talking to me or my brother. Should I admit that I have shown my son more attention over the years or continue to make my daughter feel like she's imagining things to spare her feelings? So when I thought to myself, should you go ahead and tell the truth? Tell her what she already feels in her heart or continue with the lie and the gaslighting. The kindest thing that this mother can do is admit that she favors the son over her and that there's a distinct difference. I'm going to say this, and this is personal. I have a brother, and my mother has told me and shown me one way or another that he's the favorite. This has damaged me in ways that I can't even tell you, in ways that I don't even know completely how. In our community, when we do these things, we do not help the men of our community. It does not make them stronger and emboldened. It is why we see so much emotional behaviors, so much entitlement, spoiled, spoiled behaviors from the men. Because in our community, we've got, we've got so many mothers who are heads of households and raising children by themselves. And if you don't have the father to compliment, what often happens in a traditional home when there is a father is that if there's a girl, there at least that masculine energy that makes her feel special. And when there's a boy, you have the feminine energy that makes the boy feel special. But when you're doing both, you have a special obligation, in my opinion, to make sure that you fulfill the needs of both children. Whether or not you like it, whether or not it's fair, you're the head of the household. And it's your responsibility to raise both children who are emotionally whole. When we as black mothers favor our sons, we see the devastation around us. We see the remnants of that. We see the effects of that everywhere. And what is worse is that we as women who were once girls, we feel like there's no room to be soft. We feel like we're not entitled to the benefits of womanhood in the same way. We are masculinized because we are assumed that we can just do it all. Our mothers do not coddle, but they coddle the sons. They expect us to be little versions of them. And so I would say to this mother, who I think is absolutely horrible. You just produced another set of black people where the men are entitled and the women feel like they have to do everything. And we have these conversations all the time and wonder how we got there. Now, am I going to put all of the blame on this mother? I don't know how she got to be the sole parent for both of these children. I don't care. It doesn't matter how you got here. It's your obligation to feed emotionally both those children. How many of you can say the same? How many of you have had that same experience where your mother made you the secondary honorary mom where you had to do all the cooking and cleaning while your brother was able to run and play and be free? It's so unfair and we don't seem to, con and we don't seem to connect the dots. So I say with that, we're going to have to break the cycle and we're going to have to do better. Mom, do better. Acknowledge that you don't like your daughter as much as you like your son. Give her that peace at least. After all, you're giving him the house. I'm Crystalline Karazin, and this is The Pink Pill. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. I want to know what you guys think in the comments section. Do you identify with this? Did you have a mom that did this to you? And what effects did it have on you in the long term? All right, until next time, pinkies up.